You guys ready to play this Lego adventure, Red Dragon's Tale? Yeah. I, I'm excited. Yeah, I don't know what to expect. Does anyone have the uh, Lego set yet? It's 350 bucks. So no. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little, a little steep. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out I talked to a friend and they are all that expensive. You basically take the number of pieces and divide by 10, and that's how much all those Lego sets cost. Uh, okay, so there's four of you. And the adventure begins after a long day on the dusty road. When you come to an inn built into the remains of a crumbling stone tower, the inn plain sight smells like delicious hot wings. And uh, Sternbelch, you are aware, you've heard rumors that the proprietor of this place, Alex Jade Scales, makes those hot wings fresh to order. So with mouths watering, you guys come upon the inn and we'll do some character introductions. Let's start with uh, Cornelius. Uh, Cornelius Forge Heaver is a stout, even by dwarven standards, heavy scale male and large great axe, um, road weary, ready for battle, and uh, has uh, developed a big hunger on the road and is very much looking forward to these hot wings. Madam Ethelinda. Madam Ethelinda, in her younger days, was a, a beautiful dancer uh but now she has had to retire from that and uh to make ends meet she has turned to a life of crime uh her uh let's see she's a uh genie warlock uh the big burly itibru uh, <clears throat> itibru is from the unapproachable east originally uh his family was uh his village was mowed down by fire giants but he survived and so they said ah that's fine we'll have you as a pet and eventually i learned the ways of the fire giant Nice. And then Stern Belch, who's actually one of the pre gens, tweaked a little bit to uh, to my rules. Go ahead, Stern Belch. All right, Stern Belch. Um, and I didn't come up with the name that was actually pre generated as well. Uh, I, I see Stern Belch as a cloistered uh, priest, and basically the, the temple of life I was known for its chicken wings. And uh, then he heard out that there's greater chicken wings out in the world. So. The, uh, they have allowed him out of the, this cloistered status to travel around for different recipes. So that is a uh, Stern Belch. He is a clerk. Um, uh, yeah, dwarf clerk uh, and very keen on the foods. Is Ethelinda's imp invisible, out, flying around? In what's, what's that imp up to? Invisible. Invisible, okay. So I got the invisible token on it. Hopefully you can control it. Does yep. anyone have any like spells that they have going normally during the day, such as mage armor or something like that? Nope. Do not. Okay. Well, then here is the map of this inn, and there's a low rise behind the inn over here. You can see it. And um, if you look on the second map, the rise goes up about 10 feet. There's a tower, a bridge, and then on the west, top northwest corner, a very tall tower that's crumbling at the top. And built at the base of this tall tower crumbling at the top, at the foot of this little hill, is the inn. And this is the door into the place. What would you guys like to do? Well, I want to go in. Okay. The source of this. You guys head up to the front door, open it up, and you can see inside a little inn. It's empty, though, when you peer inside. But not long after you step through the door, the door to the back room swings open, and an innkeeper comes out to greet you. He says, oh, I'm afraid you've come at a bad time. We're closed for renovations, but I'll be happy to make you some hot wings to help you on your journey. And uh, here's the innkeeper coming out. My name's Mary. What's all your names? Uh, well met, Mary. Uh, Cornelius here. Uh, quite hungry. I love some of your wings. Okay, uh, well, I'll pull up, a, pull up a seat, and I'll be right back out. He heads back into the back. Uh, looks like a kitchen of sorts as the do as the door swings open and closed. You can just catch a glimpse back there of a like an oven with some sauce on one of the burners, and then the door shuts, leaving you guys to your own devices in this inn. You look around the place and um, you don't see any evidence of this construction to which he speaks of or any remodeling, but it is empty. Doesn't look like there's been patrons here recently. What hmm. would you guys like to do while you're waiting, Cornelius? Uh... Can I go outside and look at the tower? Or yeah. Do I... Yeah, you can definitely oh, go outside. Okay. Let's do... Uh, oh, you you're going to step outside the door. Cornelia, that's what you want to do. Uh, what do we have over here? Is that like a upright base? It's a mandolin, yeah. Kind of... 
or or an upright a big mandolin yeah large mandolin uh is this there like a stage over there any other instruments nope it looks like it's left over from some performer here when the place was open uh interesting uh yeah uh he'll just belly up to the bar and wait wait for his uh his grub okay as you're bellied up to the bar you look around you can see that of course that you saw the big mandolin behind you but there's also carved onto the top of the bar a couple phrases uh you can read them they're both in common yeah sure and they say the tree hides the way and evil makes merry while good sleeps and then posted on a wall behind the bar you see a notice and you all see this basically this notice behind the bar um it says missing cat large with black fur and tentacles answers to pounds he loves milk please contact alex jade scales if found you know it's kind of pinned near that on the wall is a scrap of paper um and it bears the sketch of a red dragon's face accompanied by the words symbol of the cult of the dragon All right. and finally the last thing you notice next to the missing cat notice is an Adventurers of the Month plaque bearing a rough sketch of some adventurers with the following caption. The hard way plundered the lair of the dragon cinder howl and returned alive. Okay, then, Stringbelt, you're going outside. We'll get back to you in a second. Itabru, anything you want to do? Yep, I'm going to be nosing and go upstairs. Okay. Itabru heads on upstairs. We'll just give it to you what you see in a second. And then, Ethelinda, what do you want to do? Ethelinda is going to inconspicuously look for, like, a uh, cash register or something okay Cash box yeah okay uh da, 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 da. okay we'll start with you stern belt so you step outside uh you wanted to go check out the hill out or the tower out or what was it the tower right yeah. so he said construction i saw a crumbling being a dwarf yeah. i do a lot of work around the temple so you get to about here stern belt walking towards that hill upon which rests the tower itabru you're just getting ready to head up the stairs at the lindel you're just getting ready to get behind the bar and check it out Cornelius, you were checking out what was posted behind the bar when Sternbelch cries out, Spiders! Sternbelch, coming from around the uh, corner of the tower there, or actually these are like big trapdoor spiders. So coming out from the ground, there and there and there are three spiders scurrying your way, gigantic ones. Um, and chasing behind them is a creature coming around the corner of the... Um, the hill that is like a gigantic bear and owl mixed together. So everyone roll initiative. That owl bear is fast. It comes running up to the first spider, tries to grab it in its claws. Uh, one beak attack on it. 13 to hit the spider, which is just enough for the spider to scurry away, and then tries to bite it with its beak. It connects and does 17 damage to the spider. Uh, I should note for you nice. that um, I have increased the damage of the monster, sometimes up to as much as 50% extra. So things will be dangerous, uh, proceed as, mm. as appropriately and cautiously. Uh, the spiders still scurry away from that. One spider leg torn off in the owlbear's beaks and stern belt to your secondary. All right. Um, I will just, uh, being alone, I will try to remember the faces of everybody in my group um, and the owlbear maybe even. This might come back to come back to haunt me. I will cast Spiritual Guardians. Oh, remember, um, you actually have to be currently seeing them to exclude them. Oh, it's yeah. creatures, yeah, creatures you see that you can identify. I tried to study ahead of time. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I didn't do the green. That doesn't work. Uh, you have to actually see them yeah. while you're casting. Them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I always play like barbarians, Tom, or, <laughs> or fighters. So there's less homework. All right. Uh, how about spiritual weapon? Okay. I will cast spiritual weapon. Um, it'll be a giant uh, chicken wing. Okay. And uh, I will put it right here. I will go into the catalog and pull one out, but um, it doesn't matter what. And what are you trying to smash with that spiritual weapon? The one that's already been hurt. Okay, the 12 misses it. And that's a bonus action. You got your action left and your movement left. Um, I'll actually go to tell my teammates. So I will move. Uh, I got 25 movements. So I'll move to there. And uh, actually, I'll even use a. Yeah, I'll move to there and tell, and knock on the door and say, "Spiders outside!" And I take the impact initiative. He'll go right after you at the lintel. Uh, Cornelius, your turn. All right, Cornelius, uh, hearing the uh, commotion outside, will move forward five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Uh, looks like we got a bit of a scrum out there, and uh, 
Cornelius will uh, hold a uh, great axe attack. Uh, he'll ready an attack if uh, a spider or the owl bear comes close. Um, end his turn. Spider comes close. You want to take an attack? Oh yeah, go for it. We'll be doing a uh, power attack with a great axe. That is a hit. Twenty-four points of damage. Almost crushes the spider in one shot. Nice. And then Ethelinda, your turn. Okay, Ethelinda will rush outside. That's a window over there. Oh, this is the door. Yep. Oh, sorry. Um, then this will stay here. I'll um, Eldritch blast it from here. This is the one right in front of you. Yeah. Okay, that kills it. And then second Eldritch blast at the one next to the owl bear. Okay, that kills that one. Nice. And then the last. Oh, your uh, familiar gets to go too. Oh, my familiar will just come in fly out here with me. Okay, the last spider. It goes there, and then Earl's webs toward Cornelius. That is only a 15 to hit Cornelius, which is a hit. Uh, Cornelius, you will be restrained. Uh, you'll have a 12 strength check as an action to try and break free from this webbing, and then after the spider goes, Itabru goes. Alright. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <clears throat> 7, 8, and I will raid. Move to there. Um, if you rage now, you lose it at the end of your turn since you don't attack yeah, or took damage. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. All right, it's fine. So no rage. Yeah, as far as I can get, it's forty feet. So okay, it's forty feet of movement. And anything else besides forty feet of movement? Uh, I will ready him with my uh great sword. If one ready with the great sword. Okay. Then the owl bear stops and starts consuming the spider that you guys killed that is next to it, and then next to go is Sternbelch. All right. Um, I read the spell, so I will move the 20 feet. So I'll move 15, but I can move 20. Uh, and then I will attack. Miss. Uh, 15. Oh, oh yeah, big miss. And then uh, not knowing the web spell or uh, what that kind of entails, I will use my action to attempt to help free Cornelius. So if Cornelius makes a movement or save or anything like that make um, a strength check or you can just grant him advantage your choice granted i'll grant him advantage okay all right cornelius your turn uh, cornelius will try to rip himself out of the uh the webs here strength check with advantage dc 12 no problem <laughs> then you have your movement left and the bonus if you have anything on right. the bonus. uh movement he'll just get up and body up on this uh spider here 5 10 15 20. come and get some laddie and end his turn at the linda your turn and the imp um do the help action if it's invisible uh it can but you got to time it because it goes after you so you got to basically ready to do something and then yeah. it helps you then you do your thing um could i act and then have it help for my next attack next yes absolutely okay all right so i'll attack the um spider Oh, right. 19 oh, hit no. for 11. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw the extra three fire on there. All right. Uh, 14. And then Got it. do it again. 18 hit for 11. For 11. Fighter still and then, standing. Actually, I'll, yeah, so I'll do the help action, but for whoever goes next, if I can do that. Uh, yeah, I think it, no, you have to pick a person, actually. So you okay, want to help it to brew? It to brew, yeah. Okay, it brew. will have help on his turn. Spider's turn to go. It uh, will bite at... Cornelius, 12, Mrs. Cornelius, and then Itabru. You're your first attack right. of advantage, Itabru. All right, so I will run up here and I'll rage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That is uh, 12 points of magic slashing kills the giant spider. Be good. Yeah. Then the owlbear uh, is just consuming that spider still oh. that you guys killed. Hey, not not coming after you. Uh, your choice, son, if you want to go after it, Sternbelch. Oh. So, RL, the. Love you too. <laughs> We love you too, Sorry. Ariel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, uh, the owl bear is consuming the giant spider and uh, not coming after you guys. What do you want to okay. do, Mr. Belch? No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say, hey, does anybody need any healing? Well, nobody does, but I mean, do you need any help? Are you guys need some food? Um, maybe we should back off into the inn and ask the innkeeper about the owl bear. Okay. Uh, Cornelius. Uh, mm -hmm. Cornelius will just say, "Ah, let him have his meal." If until I uh, move back into the into the ta towards the tavern. Uh, at the Linda, your turn. Yeah, I'm heading back into the tower. And Itabru. Same. Same. Okay. So the yeah. owlbear, you guys see, kind of munches on each of the spiders, and eventually falls asleep in the middle of the meadow in the sunshine. So 
He goes over there and just grills up and goes to sleep with a full belly. Back in the inn, strangely, the innkeeper is nowhere to be found. Um, you didn't see anyone leave the inn behind you. And behind this map to the west is just a road heading west and grasslands and to the north the same and to the south it is um water like a very big lake big body of water so you don't know where this guy went the uh chamber that he or the the kitchen you can explore it butts up against that stone tower but there's no entrance into the stone tower from the kitchen inside the kitchen you find you find that it's barely used um it contains several jars of hot sauce a barrel of cooked Magically preserved chicken wings. That's uh, to the bottom right of the room. Uh, they pre-cook them. Uh, a rack of ordinary items, including a battle axe, a loot, a pike, and a rapier. <laughs> uh, the sauce on the stove there has been heating up, but abandoned by the cook, wherever the cook went. You do recall, um, Stern Belch, that you were told that Alex Jade Scales makes them fresh to order. But mm. these are definitely not fresh to order. Man, I'm a little upset. Yeah. And who yeah. keeps their equipment in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. Was there any pictures of the other adventuring party on the wall? There was not. Um, like bearing a He's rough sketch. Was a bard. There's a rough sketch of the adventurers. Um, yeah. Looks like kind of an even group of a wizard, a fighter, a, probably an evil cleric of some sort, if they're stealing okay. from dragons. Um, yeah. All right. Look, look about for a back door. Secret or otherwise. Yeah, no back door, secret or otherwise in here. Oh. Our stairs going up. You certainly could have gone up those stairs. Oh. Uh, well, I'll yell as I go up, so no s- surprise, that's for sure. And um, I'll remind you, let's see, you found in there the stuff on the wall, downstairs. Um, yeah, that's all you found. So upstairs, there'll be the map just to the right over here. The stairs go up 10 feet to a hallway with multiple doors in it all of them shut i still don't unless somebody tells me otherwise i still don't think there's anything going on other than a giant owlbear so i will go to the knock on the door no uh, answer no answer try to open it (laughs) uh inside the first room is a just a in room looks like no one's been there for some time i will tell everybody that that nobody's in here i'll knock on this door same with that room. Okay. And the door to the south. Door to the south is a little different. It's a bigger room with a big double bed in it. Looks like it might be the proprietor's room. Mm-hmm. And in this room, see that per floor contains a hall and several doors. This room contains a bed and a chest and maybe a closet door to the left there. And mounted above the chest are three small pictures. They depict, uh, this in the chat for you, the three small pictures depict a harp nestled between the horns of a crescent moon, a heroic portrait, and a mountain scene with a small plaque under it. Above the bed hangs a family portrait. Two dragonborn parents with an unhatched egg. One proud parent has light green scales, and the other has golden scales. Oh. So that's what you see above the bed. Now what do you want the, to The proprietor uh, that we saw at the beginning, Mary, what a... Uh, what Mary was a human. Was he was a human. Human. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll check the closet. Okay. Uh inside the closet a small closet with a bag that lies up on the shelf up in there hmm. really you should check and see is that a traveling bag or you check it out it is a magical bag it looks like a bag Ooh. of holding no less wow yeah inside it you find some mundane travel gear a bed roll some edible dried rations interesting okay i'll bring it back up uh I'll go over here and see if i can read the plaque the plaque on the wall, this plaque is mounted above the chest, a uh, mountain scene with a small plaque under it. The mountain scene in the picture depicts a mountain range. The tiny plaque below it reads the spine of the world. The heroic portrait, now you're close, depicts a brave hero and a member of a group. I don't know if any of you are of this group. You would know it if you are, I don't worry, but it is of the Harpers. Named mm-hmm. Sir Lucas, who is a frequent guest. Uh, the heart pictured is a symbol of the Harpers, an organization dedicated to protecting the innocent from evil doers. And yeah, that's all that you see from those pictures. Mm. I'm not really interested in looting the chest. I don't know if you guys are. Sort of. I mean, I'm not going to do it because I'm busy trying. I'm a the door to where I'm at. When my turn comes around, Tom, I'll try to open. You open that door, okay? Uh, 
that is maybe a higher end room with a chest mm, in the bed. Nice. All right. But does it look like it's anybody's been there for a no while? No one's been there for a while, no. Hmm. Um, this is so bizarre. It's had a really good rating. Pretty this, uh, anything you want to do up here? So this this wall up here uh, is a stone wall up, like kind of like yeah, butted it's against this butted tower. up against the keep of the tower keep. Yeah. Uh, have a uh, Cornelius will kind of like inspect the wall over here if there's okay. anything strange about the. Okay, you take a good hard look at that wall. You can't find any um, secret ways through it. Um, okay, but. You do, with a careful look, find a crack in the wall. And you can peer into the chamber that's beyond. Uh, it's very dark in there, so your dark vision is going to give you disadvantage on seeing what's in there. Um, which I guess there's a couple of torches shown, so you might light that up a little bit. Um, so inside the tower, you see no... This is You're looking from the second floor, and it's open with a ceiling 10 feet higher up, it looks like. And a spiral staircase that goes from the ground floor all the way up to that floor that's above. The disconcerting thing is, looking down from your vantage point, you see, if you look to the map to the left, inside that room lower down are three skeletal figures and a orb, a giant orb with vicious looking teeth, a big central eye, and multiple eye stalks, a beholder in the room. Mm. Uh, let's see what else is in there. Maybe stone, that's the cat. The stone staircase curls upward. Candlelight illuminates a pair of doors and some scattered treasure. There, there's a door to the east. There's not actually another door in there. Uh, door to the east. Uh, doors, some scattered treasure. Tucked in a corner nearby are some bright colored plants. Actually, you can't really see that from the crack in the wall either. Um, three animated skeletons dressed like adventurers. They kind of resemble Ooh. the sketches that you see of the advent- adventuring group of the month. Uh, but they're skeletons, mm. animated. Floating in the middle of the room is a terrifying spherical monster with sharp teeth, one big eye, and ten smaller eyes on wriggling stalks. And there appears to be some sort of a trap rigged on the one door into the place. That's This door that's into the place is on the ground level. As far as you know, that side of the keep at ground level faces a hill, basically. So maybe there's some tunnel under the hill you can find that would get you to that doorway. And you see that it's trapped, so you can avoid that trap from uh from the outside so uh, there's some foul stuff going on down here yeah that's who what the you hell see would keep something like that what'd you say i said who the hell would keep something like that right something okay like uh here. you want to do anything up here at the linda uh well i'm going to tell the party i've been thinking about uh what was carved in top of the bar the tree hides the way and there's that tree out with the <laughs> eyes with the eyes i'm thinking maybe <laughs> Maybe that's where we should look. And then uh, also, I'm interested in the evil makes Mary while good sleeps. Mary might be referring to the person Mary, the barkeep Mary. Mm. Um, oh. So, yeah, that's what I can offer. But I think we should go check out that tree, and that's probably how we get into this place. Oh. Yeah, I, so think I think that's, that's a good idea. Astute. Yeah. Okay. If I uh, don't want to do anything else up there, y'all head out. Uh, can I? Can I grab, like, a half dozen chicken wings. Yeah. You never know if we might get hungry. You never know. Yeah. Okay. You get your chicken wings, you head on over. Actually, I'll put you back to the ground level. Come out of the ground level, out the doors over here. The owlbear is sleeping uh, cozily in the tall grasses in the sunshine. And you want to head over to the tree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You see spiky ivy growing up the side of the crumbled tower, which is surrounded by a lush meadow. Next to the tower is an enormous tree uh, with rustling leaves. Mushrooms grow in the shade under the stone bridge that's on top of the hill there, which bears a carving of the dragon's face. The stone bridge bears a carving of the dragon's face. Uh, dragon's Is this a tree as well? Yeah, there's a tree there. But the, oh. those ones there don't do anything. Only the one with the eyes to these does. When you get close to it, birds scatter from its trees as its limbs start to move. One of the branches moves to reveal a smiling wooden face. It speaks oh, nice. slowly. Oh. Hello. And thoughtfully, it says, hello, it is a beautiful day. But it, it's gorgeous. The you weather tomorrow spiders? should be as good. Yes, they live in the meadow there. Oh, well, they did post their dead now. So. Yes, I see that yeah. owlbear. Uh, yeah. Eat them up. But so is the nature. Here often? This owlbear? Uh, what was that? Does it come here often, this owlbear? No, first time I've seen it. Okay. Do you know anything about the inn or the tower? 
Um, yes. It shuffles aside and moves a rock behind it to reveal a door leading into the dungeon below the tower. It says the way is that way, but it's held shut by a magical lock. I think I saw the spiders uh, carried away one day. The spiders, you recall, were like trapdoor spiders that came up, a couple of them out of the ground in the meadow. Hmm. Oh, worry. Right. Cornelius digging around where the spiders popped up, see if he finds okay. anything. Yeah, you find some loose coins, and you find a golden key. The loose coins, about 150 gold pieces worth, that the spiders collected over the over the years, and the golden key that um, unlocks the door to the dungeon. I think this is the way. Oh, uh, Cornelius. It seems lock, odd that the, the things we we <clears throat> may have seen through the wall. Do you know anything about the dungeon or the proprietary of the tower or? No, I don't know much about the dungeon. Um, I know many birds and squirrels' names, uh, but no, I don't know anyone in the dungeon. What about the inn itself? Uh, we went inside to a person, greeted by a person, Mary, and that person disappeared. <clears throat> I don't know a person named Mary. I know a person named Jade Scales. Who uh, owns he, the... this, he was supposed to be there and serve his wings fresh and hot. He wasn't there. Have you seen him? No. No, I have not. Interesting. Mm. Maybe the uh, mushroom men have seen them. Oh, they live up on the hill. He uh, gestures with one of his tree branches up the hill and under the bridge that goes between the two towers. Oh, how do we get up there? By the way, you can just climb. It's just a ten foot climb, and it's not too steep. Anyone can make it. Well, maybe we should go ask them. Okay. Okay. You had enough. Are they friendly? Before we uh, get up there, they're friendly. Uh, yeah, they are friendly. Okay. You make it up, you scurry up the hillside under the bridge, and two of the biggest mushrooms come alive and greet you. These two guys here. And they 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 like really you can see some spores and stuff released from them as you guys get close. And the spores kind of float through the air. Those of you with any <clears throat> allergies cough in a little bit. <laughs> uh but then all of a sudden, it feels like you can communicate with them telepathically. Uh, they stay in the shade, even though I have that one out in the shade. They seem to avoid the bright sunlight, and they ask uh, what you were doing on their hill. Well, we just came to inquire about uh, the whereabouts. Everything seems kind of weird. Everybody's gone or missing. Mm, we're here yes. for the food. Yes, we have sensed some disturbances here. Um the new innkeep is not who he says he is. Oh. He is actually a disguised sorcerer by the name of Irvin Soulfallen. It's a bad last name to have, Soulfallen. <laughs> it's like it's you're predestined. Yeah, it's like your parents didn't love you and <laughs> you were going to be evil. Um, <laughs> and uh, Irvin has imprisoned the real innkeeper, Alex Jade Scales, in this tower behind us. Oh, uh, if it was that easy, he would just come out. Is there is something special? There's no that... door into the tower. It's only access mm. is from the dungeons. Mm. Okay. You might need this. One of them walks over and comes to the side of the tower and digs some stuff up from around the compost and such there. And he gives you... Um, the items he pulls out, which consist of a potion of healing, a potion of acid resistance, and a sentinel shield. Oh. So a sentinel shield, I don't think it requires attunement. If any of you want to equip it. Yeah, no attunement. Emblazoned with the symbol of an eye. If you hold it, you have advantage on initiative and perception checks. Mm. Anyone want to can anybody else use that? Uh, I can, but not with a two-handed weapon, so go ahead. Well, my only problem is my holy symbol is part of my shield. Um, I could take up my holy symbol and put up my weapon. Does anybody else want it? I can't use it. All right. Yeah. I will. I will put up my war hammer and uh, and and take the shield. Okay. And they then, and then hold my ampule. The other. I mean, ampule. My. Uh, you know what I'm trying to do. Amulet. 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 There you go. English. Okay. So you grab also the potion of resist acid, the potion of healing, and. That's all the Mykonids know. So now we're going asking if they need anything from us. You know, they need more fertilizer from down the hill. We have a few spiders that we just killed. Do you want to, the nutrients, or are you good to go? 
Uh, yes, a good spider husk would be good to grow in. Oh, okay. Well, I will pull one up the hill. Okay. And uh, give it back to them as a uh, helping us. Okay. So now we're to. So the only way in is through that. You have a key. Uh, you have a door into the dungeon. Uh, let me draw where that door is at. So it is right over here, the bottom ten feet of the no. eastern wall. You can move through into a dungeon. Um, okay. That's it. Yeah, that's the only place. I think the only way we get these wings is if we go through that door. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> All right, you open the door. It is a uh, kind of a creaky, uh, stiff door to push open. The dungeon beyond, there's a torch that lights the area by the door, plus, of course, the light spilling in. It's musty in there. It's dark in the back corners. Um, to the right, you see a skeleton um, just to the edge of your of the darkness, but it looks like it's inanimate leaning against the wall. Hmm. So uh, who would like to go in first? Uh, Cornelius had the uh, key, so he's probably okay. stepping in first. So Cornelius, you get about ten feet in when you can see a little bit more, and everyone else is going to put you guys where you want to be when Cornelius gets ten feet in. Anyway, I will be. Se- I'll be third. If you, are we missing somebody? I'll be probably behind the barbarian. Okay. All right. Okay. As you get into the play of the dark dungeon, and your eyes begin to uh, adjust to the light. Some of the black, shadowy corners of the place seem to almost take form, like they're not just shadows, but actually black creatures that are moving along the ground and coming toward you. And then oh. the very back of the place you see as your light's glinting off of something floating in the air. Um, let's see. Yeah. So you have three black globs of ooze creeping across the floor toward Ooh. you. Behind them, floating in the air, are several items, a glowing yellow gemstone, a skull, and a silvered frying pan. That's like the far wall of the room. But that's, you can see... Okay, and then right here is the skeleton. Uh, the skeleton's leaning against the wall. You can now see that it has no skull. Clutched in one of its bony hands is a very fine scimitar. Other curious mm. items, a shield, a book, and a frosty staff are scattered throughout the room. The staff's over here. There's a ladder ascending to a closed cell door right here. There's a door at the far end of the room over there. Mm. Uh, but the oozes are coming your way, so everyone roll initiative, please. Okay, the first person to go is Cornelius. All right, these oozes are uh, on their way towards us. Uh, yeah, they are coming to, looks like, consume you. All right, Cornelius is going to move up to one of them, five, ten, um, and he is going to uh, use his uh, fighting spirit, uh, giving him five temporary hit points and advantage on his attacks, and he's going to do a couple power attacks on these guys. Okay. Uh, let's see, one second, there it is. Disadvantage, 17. That's a hit. Two. Okay, so this is magical slashing damage. Um, blah, blah. Turns out this thing is immune to slashing damage. Oh, no. Um, and as a reaction, it being subjected to slashing damage splits into two puddings. Um, you basically cleave it in half with your attack. And now you face two puddings um, of each about half the size of the first. And but it's it appears they haven't been damaged by the uh no not they're it's like they're immune to the slashing attack uh ooh uh so can he uh hit him with the butt of the uh butt end of the um with great your axe? One? yeah treat that like a club it, and okay. so it's gonna do it'll do d4 damage instead of d12 and of course you don't get all the extra stuff and you can't power attack with it I can't power attack uh. This is more like a strength check, or like yeah, it's you almost just like roll a strength check and add d4 plus your strength. Huh? Okay, and you will have proficiency as well, so you'll get the whole plus, um, like a plus six, like your save or your athletics. So a thirteen easily hits. Uh, okay, so d4 plus uh, strength, d4 plus three, and that great axe is plus one, so we'll give it plus one more. So that's um three, four, five points of magic bludgeoning. Uh, All right. Yeah, that'll end his turn. Okay, after Cornelius with the five points magic bludgeoning. Ethelinda. I think Ethelinda's going to squeeze through here. Uh, oh, uh, attack the one north of Cornelius. Okay, that's a hit. 16, I'll throw that extra fire on there, so 11. When that thing takes the fire damage, it immediately recoils, and um, 
Looks like it's going to withdraw. Oh, well then, with the second attack, I'll attack the other one. Okay, hit that one for 14. And then that is it. Okay. Um, tell the imp to... No, I'll leave the imp with so I'm done. And the turn belt's your turn. Uh, I will summon forth the spiritual weapon again. Um, uh, I'm going to do a right to... I mean, he said that he said that they were looked like they were retreating. The but I'm one still to the north little, of Cornelius is backing away. Right, but I'm gonna do it right next to Cornelius, uh, and then do the one due north. Okay. So that was fourteen Hit. for ten force. Got it. All right, and then uh, as an action, I really don't have an action, do I? When I stand back here. I will move a little bit closer to Cornelius just to see if he needs any assistance or anything. So I'll walk over there, and then I'll be the end of my turn. After you comes the pudding that's not retreating by Cornelius. It will uh, lash out at him with a pseudopod. Eight misses, though. Cornelius dodges that one. Then the one uh, struck by the fire backs away. One. Uh, it provokes Cornelius if he wants to swing at it. Two. Sure, he'll do the same butt end of the sword, of the axe, I mean. That's a hit. Oh, really? That is three, four, five points damage. Okay, after that, guy, this big pudding's going to go. That's a double move for it, so it's done. And then you see the um, the floating skull, the flowing, the glowing yellow gemstone, and the silvered frying pan. They're all in the back corner there in the darkness come come floating toward you closer. Oh, um, they get uh, about 15 feet, no... Yeah, about 15 feet closer. So 15 feet off that back wall. And then, another one of these black puddings goes... Oh, Itabru, somehow your initiative didn't sort... You rolled a okay. 16? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um, then this guy will come to there, attack Itabru with the pseudopod. That is a 16, which misses. And Itabru, your turn. All right, I have no bludgeoning weapons at all. Um, so I will get out a javelin and stab with it. I knew what I was supposed to do. I don't see a regular javelin on here. There should be a regular javelin in yeah, alphabetical order after your attack action. Yeah, okay. Or attack, great sword, hand axe, javelin. All right, There's also so your javelin of lightning, too. Yeah, I'm not going to use that in here. It's kind of a closed space. All right, so I will... So there's two jab. Oh, I see. There's a one's lightning throwing yeah. throwing range of javelin. Is that also the melee one or over in your attacks? Um, do you have a alphabetically sort token actions turned off? Uh, I don't even know where that is. Oh, go to my settings. Go to personalization and display. My settings is the gear icon above the chat on the right. Mm -hmm. Personalization display and uncheck the box by alphabetically sort token actions. Okay, it's unchecked. And then check off your token back on your token. Then you'll see. Um, you have the thing that says ATK for attacks, then after that's greatsword, yep. after that's hand axe, after that's javelin. Yeah. So the, that's your regular javelin attack, and then there's a javelin of lightning after that. Okay, so the one, it's it's got a range on it, but that doesn't make automatically throwing. Okay. No, it doesn't. So stabbing crit. with the javelin. I, awesome. Nice. I'm not raging yet, so yes. 10 piercing. Okay, so that's a crit. That does 10 piercing, not raging. Um, it's a non-magic weapon. As it goes into the thing, it kind of sizzles yep. and corrodes and burns and um oh i forgot this should have been also affecting cornelius on his one attack i'll remind remember next time cornelius uh when you hit it with a melee attack within five feet of it you're sprayed with corrosive acid you take six acid damage you to brew that's no good you know magic weapon wood weapon uh deal damage to the ooze it takes permanent and cumulative minus one to its damage if it drops to minus five it's destroyed ammo's destroyed right. for the first time well all right so then uh that's no good Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I can interact to pull out the magic javelin, so uh, you're not gonna. Yeah, I'd let you pull out the magic javelin. All right, so then I'll use the javelin of lightning, just the stabby end, not the okay. throwy end. All right, so I'll stab it with the javelin of lightning. Okay. All right, that's a hit for seven damage. Right. It is magical, so it does not correct. Okay. After your turn, Cornelius, your turn. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Geez. You also got sprayed by acid again uh, for a total of ten acid damage this time. That's going to kill me, I'm sure. We're going to die from the damn acid spray. So back to Cornelius. <laughs> your turn, Cornelius. Uh, so I'm going to move around to here. Okay. Can I squeeze uh, through those puddings or no? Maybe I can't. I, can, I don't think I can. Can I squeeze through here? You can't uh, squeeze through. No, no, you can't. No. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Cornelius, your turn. Uh, 
Cornelius is going to try to pull a torch and light it. Okay, you do. And um, that's probably his action, right? Yeah. And this thing kind of cowers away from you. Yeah, he's um, going to start waving it at the, the guys. Okay. Um, but probably doesn't get an attack. Okay. Ethelinda, your turn. Uh, Ethelinda will attack the one to the south, Rich Blast. Yes. 18 for. Uh, I'll add the fire on there. Okay. So 17. 17 damage, and that one's cowering away. And then I'll attack the same one. That's it again for, for seven more. Seven. Let's turn belt, your turn. All right. I will spiritual weapon um, attack the one to west of Cornelius. Uh, 20 for 10 force damage. And then uh, is there any like a bonus action I can hand my Warhammer over to Cornelius or would yeah. that be an action? Yeah, it's free interaction. All right. I will hand you my Warhammer as I am not using it. And then the puddings go. So the one northwest for Cornelius with a pseudopod. Uh, Tom, I here. forgot to I forgot to add the one of the fire giant strengths. I'm not sure how it. So I can deal one d ten fire once per once per turn. Uh, is that it? No. Um, you're raging. You do that. You also have uh, yeah, feet, the, your strike feet strike. Yeah, once per turn, hit with a melee weapon or throw an attack to extra d ten fire damage. That was Edebru. I did that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So minus time. You can do that. Your proficiency bonus times for long rest. So uh, right. Keep track of how many times you can do that. And uh, Cornelius, actually the one that attacked you, that just hit, doesn't attack you because you're wielding a, a torch that hmm. backs into the corner there instead of attacking you. Nice. Uh, then, next to go is... Can he, uh, can he uh, opportunity attack, with, like burn it with a torch? Sure. All right. Because that's just strength. Yeah. That is a hit. And it'll do D4 fire damage. Three. Got it. All right. Then the one west of Cornelius... Since you have a torch, it backs away, back into the corner over there. And then Cornelius, as you see the floating skull and the floating yellow gemstone and the floating silvered frying pan coming your way, your passive perception is high enough that now you can tell it's actually encased in a cubic mass of gelatin. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Two. Which comes to there and is done. And then the last pudding... Burned by fire, or goes away. Itabru, you can take an attack opportunity if you want, and so can you, Stern Belch. I don't want to get sprayed with acid, so I let it go. Okay. Um, then after Stern Belch, blah, 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 is Itabru. I don't have anything melee. Itabru, Cornelius warns you about the gelatinous cube. There, you can just barely make it out now that you know. Look for it. Uh, okay. Let's hope it's uh, not friendly. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not so. I hope it's susceptible to slashing damage. Is what I'm. Yeah, say. all right. All right. So I'll move up to here, and uh, I will swing on the creature. All right. So you know what? Uh, I want to take half damage. Well, it's gonna eat me with acid, so that rage doesn't help. All right. So I will. Uh, I will swing on it uh, once. The great sword. That is a hit. Nine magic okay. slashing seems to affect it. All right, and then I will swing again. That's a hit, and that's it. All right, that is over. Cornelius, your turn. Uh, Cornelius then is going to move up towards Gelatinous Cube, and he's going to swing with uh the war hammer that was handed to him. Couldn't use you. Oh, boy, you don't have anything that's a war hammer. Yeah, I don't so have just it. Roll it manually, uh, yeah. I could I could use like I have the hand axe. That I could simulate it with, and then just roll a d8. It's just as fast to just roll a d20, then roll a d8. I just rolled d20, yeah. d8. All right. Uh, that's not. That's probably going to hit. Oh, really? Depends on what your bonuses are. You only have to get arm plus, plus three six. Strength, and then proficiency. You got it. Plus, yep, <laughs> got I got it. it. All right. <laughs> so that'll be six damage. All right. It's pudding after all. Uh, and really, this one next. is not corrosive, so you don't. Uh, I have any problem with that. Okay, another one that's going to hit. It's five more damage. Got it. Uh, that will um, end Cornelius' turn. He's got the torch, lit torch in one hand, Warhammer in the other. Ethelinda, your turn. I'm going to drop a fireball. Oh, okay. <laughs> back back here, I think. Okay. Whoo! Yeah, just take care of this yep. problem. Yeah, that's going to get all the baddies, but none of the goodies. Do you can center that where you want it. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Yeah. Oh, that won't get that one guy. That won't get 
Ooh. Right there. There we go. That won't okay. go. Yeah. How much damage you do? Maybe in. Did you roll the damage yet? There it nope. is. Oh, good Ooh, roll. 32 nice. fire. Bam. Okay, so after 32 is going to be 16. That goes that one for sure. And then the rest gets saving throws. So deck saving throws are probably not good. <laughs> fail. Very nice. Make it fail. So 32 to this guy. This one actually makes it 16. Uh, to be 18, right? 15, 16. Oh, DC 18? No. Yeah, yeah, no. No, 16 fails. It died. Oh. And then 32 well. damage to that guy. And then the cube. Deck save. He failed. And he takes 32 fire. Nicely done. Very All right. nice. All right. So a blast of ex insane heat fills this dungeon. Now it's all smoky and co you're coughing and choking. <laughs> <clears throat> the mundane equipment's burning over there. The the short bow's on fire. The uh, the the uh, barrel over there with the staff and it's on fire. And anything else, Seth Linda? Um, I'm gonna pull the imp in here, but that's that's it. Okay, Stern Belt, your turn. All right, uh, spiritual weapon. Ooh, crit. Ooh, nice. Uh, very nice. 13, uh, 13 points of force damage on the gelatinous cube. Got it. And then sacred flame uh, on, the, on the cube as well. Okay. So 15 radiant, 15 dex save negates. Mm -hmm. Fails so that. Five, po five points of radiant. But I don't know if they're susceptible to. They are not. They do okay. take damage, but not till battle. Okay. Roger. Okay. Pudding's turn. Um, they're both burned badly and cowering in the corner as much as they can. Uh, Cube just is lashing out blindly at Cornelius with a pseudopod. 23 to hit oh. you, Cornelius, for 20 acid damage. That will get there. And don't think move its speed. That's actually an action to do that. So it doesn't engulf you. And then this one goes in the corner and tries to hide, uh, provoking from. No one. It wasn't near you guys. And then it approved you from the cube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Two, three. All right. So I will swing on the cube one time. That finishes the cube. All right. <clears throat> then I will go here and I will burn these two guys. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. Oh, there it is. Siri right. so ignition. Make... Um, eight fire and blind them. 14 dex save for half dex. Both fail. You kill that one, and you blind, and do eight fire to that one. Okay. Then Cornelius, your turn. Cornelius will move forward 5, 10, 15, 20, and stick the torch out on this guy, try to burn him. That does. D4 fire, you take uh, 9 acid. Ooh, it's not really a good deal there. At the end of your turn. Uh, okay, I'm going to Eldritch Blast that pudding in the back. Hit for 8. Uh, Plus the three fire, so eleven. Okay. And then that should be all your fires for the adventure, right? Yep. And then uh, fifteen for six. Fifteen for six. Got it. After the Linda Stern Belt, your turn. Okay. Right. Move over the spiritual weapon. Uh, strike. Uh, Hit. Okay. Uh, Twelve for seven. Uh, force damage, and then I will sacred flame. Four Got points of radiant. Right. And I will move. Okay. It lashes out, trying to defend itself. Gross of uh, pseudopod coming at Cornelius. 23 to hit you, Cornelius. That'll hit. Uh, 10 bludgeoning, 21 acid. Is your armor <laughs> magical? It is not. not. It gets one worse, so your armor class drops by one. Okay. And it's done. And then Itabru, your turn. Uh, all right. So watching this acid -y thing, um, if I throw a javelin at it while Cornelius is next to it, is he going to get splashed? He will not. Uh, all right, so then I will throw the javelin of lightning at it, regular, not activating the lightning. It's kind of a waste on one target, so I'll just throw the magical javelin at it. And that finished it. All right. Okay, so you're here in the smoldering dungeon. You got Retaining a door to the west. Javelin. You got a ladder to the east. You got various items all around the room. As the gelatinous cube kind of sloughs down into just a oozy pile of gelatin on the floor, the skull and the glowing gemstone and the silver frying pan clattered to the ground. Around the dungeon in total, you find a whole bunch of stuff. You find behind that shield over there a book. Inside the book, you find a scroll. On a shelf behind the ladder, you find a potion. The headless skeleton clutches a scimitar. 
Um, judging from the barrel as a staff, lying on the floor near the barrel was a short bow, but that's all burned up. Uh, so here is a total of everything you found in the room. The, um, the shield is a plus one shield. The, the sensor in the room is a devotee sensor. It's a flail. Um, it's a holy wep- holy symbol, a magic weapon, deals an extra D8 radiant, can heal people around it. Um, let's see, you found a Tome of Clear Thought. Won't have any time to read that, but it's a book that can increase your um, intelligence. Intelligence? Yeah. Wow. Scroll of Speak with Dead. There's a Scroll of Speak with Dead. Potion of Speed. Scimitar of Speed. That thing is a... That takes a attunement. And for this adventure only, um, I'm going to let attunements happen immediately. So if you want, if you do have an open slot, you can attune to something immediately. Uh, but you can't unattune. That'll take a long rest. So use them wisely. Uh-huh. So yeah, someone could take that scimitar speed right away and start using it. And then the last item is a staff of frost. It's also an attune item. Uh, War- Warlock can use a staff of frost. You resist cold while you're wielding it. You can cast all sorts of spells while you're wielding it. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. So you guys have all of those items. Uh, you're pretty badly wounded. Cornelius has yeah. got acid burns all over his body. Mm-hmm. Cornelius is going to use his uh, second wind to start to get a little health back. Well, yeah. Before you maybe... do Cornelius, before you do Cornelius, let's turn Belch do something. Yeah, oh. let me do the prayer of nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Where's Beacon of Hope? All right, Beacon of Hope. So oh. I'm going to cast Beacon of Hope. Everybody get within a certain amount of feet. Uh, you get max healing. For the duration, it takes one minute. So when you're doing that, you can do that. Now I'm going to do Prayer of Healing. Yeah. So Prayer of Healing doesn't benefit from the beacon, because Prayer takes 10 minutes to cast. The beacon only lasts a minute. Oh, see, this is why I should have done the homework. <laughs> um, I will give you... I have a Potion of Greater Healing, which will automatically give you 20 back. Oh, nice. So it'll be um, 20 yeah. plus 15 for the second yeah. win. Mm-hmm. Plus 21 for the Prayer of Healing. Did you want to do the Prayer of Healing, Stern Belch? Yeah, but then they'll they'll see maximize in the first minute, right? Twenty one yeah. will get him get him back to where he needs to be. Uh, drink, drink my potion too soon. Yeah, but you get used max on that. Didn't you get max on that? I drank it before you started casting. Wait uh, yep. Always wait for the life cleric. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. Make sure Cornelius suddenly feeling things. very very stout and strong again. Stern Belch, yeah. did you do the prayer healing? Twenty one points. Uh, I actually think, I, I actually no. I'm actually okay. not going to do well, that. I'm going to do cure. I'm going to do cure wounds instead, which will give you 15. Okay. So Cornelius, and that's a first level spell. So Idabru, you did not get 21. Cornelius did not get 21. Cornelius, you got 15. Yeah. Okay. And then I will I give you another cure wounds, uh, Idabru. Okay. Thank you. And that should bring you up, right? And then I only expend first level spells. I'm actually really proficient at spell casting, so I know exactly what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. All right, perfect. So nobody right. die, because otherwise I don't have my revivify. Can anybody else use that stuff of frost, or am I the only? I can't. Did you hear it? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, where to now? Uh, I think the ladder. Yes, okay. I think so as well. Because it goes okay. up. Yeah, the ladder goes, goes up. up. Yeah, I'm trying to find. I don't going to say care, care about the monsters if we can find the the innkeeper, right? Right. Because I want some damn wings. So you go up, you find Alex Jade Scales in the chamber above on the map to the right there, uh, in the tower. He uh, has bright green scales. Um, uh, the door, the door to the prison cell is locked, but you guys can just use athletics to force it open, mm-hmm. and you got some strong enough people to do that. So no problem getting in, in the chamber there. Uh, Alex is a dragonborn, and he looks at you, uh, not sure, not trust, not, you know, like kind of with some trepidation. He doesn't know who you are. He's prisoned here in his own inn. You look like uh, pretty dangerous adventurers. What do you say to him? Well, we came for the chicken wings. Uh, how did you end up here? Uh, Irvin. Irvin put me here. He hired a group of adventurers called the Hard Way to steal a dragon egg from the lair of a red dragon. Oh, damn. You don't work for him, do you? No. The dragon's name is Cinder Howl. The adventurers delivered the egg, but Irvin betrayed them 
Instead of paying them, he killed them and fed their corpses to the oozes in the dungeon. Ooh. He hid the egg somewhere in the tower and is waiting for it to hatch. Ooh. You said uh, you want you said you want um hot wings? I can make yeah, some hot wings. Who doesn't? Oh yeah. But you should not wait for them to be ready. I'm gonna make them fresh, of course. And yeah. uh this place is dangerous. Um I'll, I'll throw away the when nobody's looking, I'll throw away the half dozen wings that I brought from the okay. hotel. He thanks you for Free freeing him. <laughs> he says, uh, once you guys have defeated Irvin, you can have all the hot wings you can eat. And um, I just need to find my silver frying pan. Oh, we found that. It's down, it's down oh, the ladder. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. That's, that'll cook him up the best. Um, I you haven't, not, I can't seen a big black that. cat, have you? No. Is that mm. Pouncy? Pouncy, yeah. No, we haven't seen Pouncy. Oh, well, maybe I should was, stick with you until we find Pouncy. There was an owlbear outside. Do you know the owlbear? No. Okay. I've been here a couple, you know, God, must be almost a 10-day now. I've been waiting here. Have you had anything to eat since then? A few things. They just brought me a few plates. You can see plates stacked up in the corner there. Oh. Huh. Mm. Just barely enough why to keep they, me alive, though. But why would they keep you alive? I don't know why he wants me alive. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, yeah. Let's let's find your pouncy. Okay. Let's go look for pouncy. Yeah. Uh, he first tries pouncy. to lead you to the inn and look all around the inn, but you had to, you didn't pouncy see pouncy an anywhere. Inside cat or an outside cat? Pouncy. Uh, both. Yeah. Oh, inside and outside. yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we scoured the inn here. We didn't see him, but mm. uh, I think the only place we haven't been is this uh, door. Remember, it's trapped. We yep. saw from the other side. I'll stand. I'll stand back here. Alex says. Uh, so to get that trap um, back there, maybe you should stay up at the top of the ladder just in case, Alex. Okay, I'll stay up here. All right. So to disable that trap, um, none of you are thieves or anything. No. Nope. Any ideas for how you want to trigger it without being wounded? What did the trap look like on the other? Looks like the axe the would. Side? Yeah, it looks like when you go to open the door, the axe will swing down and and basically attack someone who's standing east of the door. Uh. Is there any way to open it at range, maybe? Um, there's a door handle on it. Uh, you don't know Mage Hand, do you, Ethlinda? No. How strong is your familiar? Um, pretty strong. Uh, mm. Well, a six strength. Oh. But so it's not like we can have them go in through the crack in the wall and... Oh, open it. Yeah. Let me see what I got in my inventory. Um, uh, block incense won't open it. Um, and it's a door handle. It's like a turn and open. Yeah. Okay. Or no, more like a a rung to grab. Okay. Oh, so and it's a pull. Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, we just need some rope. Got some. Yeah, just get, tie some rope to it and uh, or yank it. You do that. Okay. I don't. Uh, uh, you can take up where spot you want to be in when you pull the door open. Once you're happy where you're standing, roll initiative. I suspect that <clears throat> currently on SI, we're yanking on the rope together. Yeah, we'll maybe stand up here. All right. I'm good. No. Okay. Mm. So you All throw right. open the door, or you pull open the door, the axe comes smashing down. Would have hit whoever was there, but does no damage to you guys. Uh, you can see the floating in the middle of the room, the terrifying spherical monster with the sharp teeth and the one big eye. Uh, the animated skeletons begin moving toward you. The monster with the big eye, it bares its teeth, uh, but doesn't attack at all. So, Ethelinda, your turn. I'm sorry, how did the skeletons react? Skeletons start They're marching toward you to attack. Okay. Then I will. Might not come through. Your initiative? Did it not come through? I don't know. I don't see it. Try again. Yeah, I don't see it on the yep. right either. Roger. Oh, I picked oh. up a token or something. There it goes. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> okay, Ethelinda. Oops, wrong guy. Sorry. I'll move to there and attack at that first skeleton. Okay. Uh, here we go. Eldritch Blast. Ooh, 12? 12 missed. Try that again. 18 hit. 18 for 9. 9 of force. Okay. Cornelius. Cornelius will uh, step forward. 5, 10, 15. Uh, hold an attack for a skeleton that comes through the doorway here. Okay. This turn. Two, three. Go ahead. Uh, we won't do a power attack. We'll do a regular one uh, with the great axe. Oh yeah, that's it. Eight magic slashing. Skeleton turns to attack you with its short sword. Eight to miss on you. 
And then the next skeleton goes. One in the doorway there. One four comes here. Attacks with his short sword. And these skeletons, now that they're close up, you can see they're they're adorned as if they were adventurers. Um, and they have some pretty good looking gear on them. They're not using it to its capability, but definitely some magic items on them they're wearing. Uh Jade Scales, he just he just calls down, What is it? What's in there? Skeletons. And then the he stays floating thing with tentacles. He stays where he's at. Uh Stern Belt, your turn. Um, I will uh I'm going to just use Sacred Flame. I'm gonna save my thing. I was gonna turn them, but we're doing much better than I thought we would. So eleven radiant to the one um in the doorway. Oh, it dodged uh, it. fifteen dex save. It dodged Sacred it. Flame. It a brew, your turn. Okay. I will rage and move down to this guy. Fourteen hit. Nice. Twelve, 12 damage kills it. And then Good I'll job. Go up to swing on this guy. Oh, nine. Nine misses. Is a miss. Yep. Not a bitch. All right. The last skeleton. Two, three, four, five. Comes there. Attacks Cornelius with a short sword. Seventeen just connects, doing five piercing Cornelius. Yep. The beholder bares its teeth, and you swear it almost makes a hissing sound. Uh, Ethelinda, your turn. Um, Ethelinda will attack the easternmost skill. It and killed it. for eight, and then go for the one by it. Oh, obliterated. Nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, the beholder does not come after you. It hovers uh, there, teeth bared, makes no advancing move. What do you guys want to do? I, I want to come to the door. You said I heard a hissing sound. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, and and the uh the guy, the proprietor, Jade Scale. Mm -hmm. Um, he said what killed the? He didn't say anything about a beholder. He said like a dragon ate it. No. Or a, he right. said that the evil wizard Zorch the adventurers that he hired and threw them in here. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, and we've already seen one illusion, right? So maybe this thing is actually pouncy covered by an illusion. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Uh, I will cast uh, first level detect magic. Okay. So that, tell me illusionary meta. Um, you detect sense magic, um, action to see aura of visible magic. Okay. So on your next turn, you can do an action to sense what auras are around it. Cornelius. I did walk in, so everybody doesn't have to bump me when they walk in the room. It backs away from me. Hmm. Cornelius, uh, yeah, he will um, move forward. Mark up that spell. Stern Belch here. Uh, try to, like, get a good look at this uh, beholder. How how high is it in the air? Is it, like, it's moving about funny? five feet off the ground. Five feet off the ground? Yeah. Hmm. Speak, creature. What, what are you doing here? Uh, Cornelius will uh, try to get some information and his turn. It does not answer. Alex is staying up there. Stern Belt, your turn. Um, now I'm going to use my action to Wait, did we see the aura. This has skipped you somehow. Because no one else has gone since you went, did they? Mm -mm. I don't know what's going on. It's weird. Um, we'll put you... Belinda went, then you went, I think? I don't know. Uh, it brew your turn. I probably went out of turn. It's probably what happened. Alright. Hey, uh, Alex, does... Um, does Pouncy hiss at people he doesn't know. Uh, yeah, you you see Pouncy? Alex starts sure. crawling we, down the stairs. We, we see, stay back there. We're not sure yet, but the, what? it could be Pouncy. He likes milk. Sure. He likes milk. And you have he, he comes to the name Pouncy. We'll call him and see what happens. All right. Alex calls out to Pouncy, and the beholder just starts racing past you. Stern Belt, you want to dive out of the way? Yeah, I do. Okay, Reaction. He gets the door and is like, Butting up against the door and he can't get past it. And Alex comes running over to it and then comes to a skidding stop when it sees it and says, That's not bouncy. Uh, the holder's trying to get through I the think door. It's covered by magic, Alex. Let's see what we can do. I okay. Think that's pretty much all of my turn. Okay. Uh, yeah. The beholder never attacks you guys. And uh, you guys uh, eventually get Alex brave enough to approach it. Um, and as this is all going on, this uh, beholder has a central eye, and every time it sweeps over you, you feel like all your magic kind of not work. Mm. Um, and Alex, you know, talks to it, and it tries to lick him when he gets close, but he's still a beholder. Did I ever, did I ever see what school of magic it was? Oh, yeah, transmutation. So probably like uh, a polymorph oh. spell. It's polymorph <laughs> from the beholder. Yeah. I was going to say. Or it might uh, have been a really powerful polymorph. I don't think you can just polymorph into yeah. a beholder. Um... <laughs> 
Can I... I will reach out, I will cast a cantrip resistance. Um, and I will touch the beholder. Okay. Don't they get a save for polymorph? Only when they are polymorphed. Oh, only at the time, not every yeah. like every minute or anything? No, no. Oh, never mind then. Um, I, I cast it anyways, because I don't know. Does, uh, does Dispel Magic break uh, polymorph? It might. It might, if we have it. I do not have Dispel Magic. Is there anything on this table yeah, over here? Yeah, you can search the room. You want to search the room? Um, yeah. In that basement room, you find, on the adventurers, um, several items. On the floor, some loose coins. Near the plants, a manual. Ducked inside the manual is a scroll. Sitting in an alcove is a lantern. And atop some high shelves are a couple of potions. Over there. Um, so you have a plus one breastplate. Holy crap. A sword of sharpness, longsword of sharpness. A dagger of venom. Remember, you can attune immediately, but once you attuned, you're stuck with it. So you take a long rest to attune. Um, dagger of venom. A ring of invisibility. It's kind of oh. nice. That's kind of a nice ring. Um, a robe of scintillating colors. Oh. A manual of quickness of action that can make your dexterity go up better. Scroll of protection from energy. A lantern of revealing. Potion of Healing Greater. I don't even have a button for that one. Um, and a Potion of Heroism. So you find all those items. Wow. Uh, so the one item that's hard to get to, though, or is two of them. The Potion of Manual of Quickness of Action and the Scroll of Protection from Energy are right near those bright red plants, and you have to like brush the plants so aside to get to it. Do you want to do that? Uh, I don't know anything about them, so does it, somebody smarter than me know anything about plants? I don't think any of you have any training in nature. Do any of you have any training in survival? I have survival. Survival, have survival. okay. Yeah, the plants look poisonous. I'd stay away from them. And yet, to get the okay. book out of them, you'd have to kind of brush them aside with something. Uh, well. I mean, I have a staff. Yeah, you have the staff of frost. Maybe they don't like cold. You want to do that, Ethel Lindell? Use the staff to brush them aside? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're able to get that book out of there, no problem. All right, you mind if I take this breastplate? My uh, armor got a little uh, messed up. Earlier. Yeah, it's probably not a good choice. What you should do. All right, so the beholder's there, acting like a cat. Um, what about the lantern? Use the lantern on the on the beholder. It turns to the, you. You go to the lantern, and the lantern lights up. You know, bright. When the beholder's eye ray sh- sweeps across it, it goes out. Mm. So maybe we should search. Maybe we don't want bouncy to be a displacer beast right away. Maybe if there's a sorcerer, why would they not still... I don't know why they didn't hear the fireball, but are they still potentially... Like, we need to go up and see what's going upstairs. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe Alex, Alex says he'll stay here with uh, Bouncy. Or Pouncy. We need, to, we need to find the damn dragon egg before it come, the mama comes calling. Yeah, Roger. Okay. Um, uh, this, is, this a, is this a door over here? Uh, no, it, I mean, it, oh, okay. it is drawn like a door, but there's no door. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what went on. Like, maybe they copied and rotated the map or something. And Anyway, uh, the stairs circle around to this part of the map, which is just basically open a full two floors high. So then the next floor up is where the stairs deposit you into a chamber, which will be right below you on the map or here. So there's the chamber that you guys come up into. And inside this chamber... There's a shrine against the wall to the right, and carved above the shrine are five stone dragon heads. Those of you trained in Arcana would make a bet that those are the five chromatic dragons, and that this shrine is a shrine to Tiamat. Resting on the shrine's altar is a lustrous green orb, about a, about 10 inches in diameter. And there is a large key resting on a small stand, that's a little wooden stand there with a, with a large key resting on it. Um, you guys actually come up the stairs. Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. They go down or up? Well, those stairs right there go down. Then there's another flight of stairs right over here going up to another floor right. higher up. Uh, right. Be careful. Can uh, Cornelius go in front and uh, use a stone cunning check on the stonework over here on the, the dragon heads? Uh, yeah, crafted by humans, f- potentially of the cult of the dragon. This tower might have been some sort of dragon worshipping tower. Um, definitely human manufacturing. Hmm. Is your detect magic still running? I'm, I'm, is that orb magical? Egg. Is it an orb or an egg? That is an orb. Oh, okay. Yeah. 10 foot diameter orb. 
Uh, Good lord, it's massive. And then the key over there. Um, everyone, put you guys where you want to be when the Idabru goes to get the key. <laughs> I'll be I'll be over by the orb. I'm not getting too close, but trying to detect if it's magical. Nidabru, you naturally cautiously approach the key, and your perception's a 13, which unfortunately doesn't reveal to you that the floor in front of the key is a trap door, and you fall mm. 20 feet down to the floor below. Ugh. You make a dexterity saving throw, DC 15, to grab the edge of the uh, floor before you fall through it, and you get oh, your right. barbarian advantage. Yeah. All oh, right, yeah. You, the floor falls out. You plummet down five or so feet. You grab the edges just, just before you fall through. And you're able to pull yourself up. And okay. the trap door that's there in front of the stand is basically five feet by five feet. So where I'm standing is... Right where you're standing is the only place that the door exists, yeah. Okay. So I crawl out here, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I found the trap. I'm not a rogue, <laughs> but I found the trap. Found it the hard way. And the key there is still there. And Stone Belch and Cornelius, you're checking out the stone... Altar there with a big 10 inch diameter orb on it, uh, of etched glass with kind of a green swirling mist, it seems like, inside it. What else do you guys want to do? Is the orb, uh, Cornelius will, will touch the orb. Is it like warm? Is it yeah. anything radiating off it? Um, it is uh, not warm or anything. It's about 10 inches in diameter, etched crystal. Um, Ethelinda, you. You have a sinking suspicion this might be a powerful artifact you've heard of called Holy the Orb God. of Dragonkind. Oh. To use it, you'd have to peer into it and speak its command word. So you need to know its command word, um, which you could get without identify spell if you had that ready and prepared, or if you had some other way of knowing its command word. Um, so that's what you determine. Uh, you know that touching it should be safe. Cornelius, however, when you do touch it, you trigger a trap. All five of the dragon heads snap down to bite at you, and they get to make one attack roll at plus five on the attack roll. Plus five. Uh, Eleven. You dodge out of the way of that, and they retract back into position. Arr. Well, I don't need this as a uh, magic user stuff anyway, so forget it. Uh, Ethelinda, if you want it, it's all yours, but I don't know. Uh, this kind of uh, artifact uh, escapes my uh, knowledge or interest. Is it like stuck where it is, or can it be? You can take it with you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Otherwise, in the room, you have the key, and the key looks like it will lock that pit trap that you just fell through. It also looks like it might unlock the um, prison cell where Alex was imprisoned. Oh. Okay. But the, the one that you broke and forced open. Also, you know, to underneath the stairs, there's a little alcove. It looks like a potion vial in the alcove. There? Oh. Yeah, right. Oh. So you don't need the key, basically, right? Because you've already... You already smashed. Unless there's any other things that opens that you haven't got to yet. Well, I will shut this door and lock the trap door. Just okay. What's, uh, the yeah, what's the potion? Uh, you go to grab the potion, and an enormous spider trapped. crawls out. Uh, everyone roll initiative. I knew it. That's not massive. Compared to the ones we just fought? <laughs> compared to the ones you just fought, it's not massive now. Uh, I attuned to the shield, but I'm going to wear the plus one instead. Okay. okay. Cornelius, oh. you are first to see it. What do you want to do? Uh, I'll uh, swing the great axe at it okay. two times. Oh yeah, that that squishes it. Giant spider dead. The potion is a potion of clairvoyance. Wow. Um, this potion. potion of clairvoyance. Yeah, he'll grab it and hand it to one of the uh, spellcasters, whoever wants it. Okay. Um, the other way you could find what that orb does would be to take a short rest and it, and then uh, hold on to it and determine its, its um, command word that way. And at the same time, it's time for us to take a quick break. Excellent. It's uh, 36 after, so let's take a break until uh, 37 after. Take, take a break until um, 47 after. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Then we can decide who wants to You can decide if cuddle, you want to take a short rest or who wants to cuddle the orb. Yeah. All right. So talk amongst yourselves. Decide if you want to take a short rest and identify the orb and what it can do, or if you want to press forward. I guess when you're ready to vote, you can move up to press forward and down to identify the orb and take a short rest. Uh, I think uh, there was potentially a command word, something like, could it be, uh, what was the name of that uh, 
dragon that we saw. Is it Cinder Howl? Cinder Howl. I guess, but no. Uh, the hard way? Nope. <laughs> well, we just. <laughs> Are we, yeah, just take a short rest and we can figure it out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we just take a short rest. I think we also uh, a brew probably and Cornelius, you guys can vote uh, up to press on, down for short rest. Just move your token up to press on, or move your token down for short rest. Um, all right, short rest it is. So right. you guys get all your hit points back with your short rest hit dice spend. Uh, you need short rest powers recharge and the orb of dragon kind. It does the. <clears throat> First of all, tuning into it is dangerous. Uh, don't um, do not do it lightly. You have to peer into it, speak its command word, and make a 15 charisma check. And if you fail that 15 charisma check, not a save, but a check, you are charmed by the orb, and you do what it tells you. And it urges you to work towards its evil ends. But if you succeed, you can cast such varied spells as Cure Wounds, Daylight, Death Ward, Detect Magic, Scrying, you can call dragons. Oh, um, wow. You don't control the dragons, it's you controlling the orb. That's when you can use the action to call dragons. Uh, it can be destroyed by powerful magic. It's got a minor benefit, allowing you to cast Guiding Bolt, a minor detriment, making you smell bad. Um, mm. Also gains, gives you survival as a minor benefit. Major detriment, you experience uncontrollable tremors, disadvantage on strength, and dex attacks, checks, and saves for two days. And then there's <laughs> the spells you can cast. Anyone want to try to take control of the orb? Not today. Nope. Okay. So the detriments you that that's regardless of the save that happens. Or yeah, you gain you gain the benefits or, and the detriments okay. um, regardless of this. The detriments are regardless. The benefits are if you control it. Okay. Yeah, I think you. We can wait until after the okay. adventure. Well, okay. What, one thing I was thinking though was uh, Cinder Howl, the the dragon. They stole the egg. If we bring the dragon back here to get the egg. Maybe it destroys whatever uh, sorcerer stole it from her. Yeah. But uh, I think somebody has to attune to it to make that happen. You would. Uh, You'd have to uh, control it and attune to it. I think mm -hmm. the odds of uh, me controlling this are pretty low, so I don't know if that'll work. Just, just a thought. Well, I think she's going to come regardless. She's probably pissed about her egg being gone. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You ready to go up the stairs? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, did, did we learn what this the word was? The command word? Uh, yeah. It isn't actually specified in the adventure. So. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, some random command. So yeah, before we go up the stairs, I think we should kind of think about distribution. Like we have some pretty snazzy stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the robe of shimmering colors. You know, at disadvantage. Ring of invisibility. Ring of invisibility. Potion of heroism. You know, scroll of protection from energy. You know, and that we also had a potion earlier. Was also, I feel like if we get in a tangle with a dragon, um, me having draconic roots and speaking draconic, I understand they have a breath weapon. So we should be, you know, pretty careful about these things. I'm going to take the the clerk specific stuff. Um, so, but we should think about if we want to pre pot before we Leroy Jenkins into anything. Um, to brew, think, you want the uh, potion of heroism? I think that would. Uh, yeah, probably good, good idea. for you. Yeah, and then the robe probably should be on one of the fighters. Is I'm that guessing. able to be worn over armor, or is that? Yeah, it's like a cape. Yeah, I think okay. right. So one of the frontline individuals should do that. I'd, what uh, Tom? I didn't couldn't figure out. It just said creature in bright light. Does that mean? Even if we're close to the person, we can be stunned. Um, hold on, so I'm gonna check that real quick. Yeah, I'm grabbing a list of all your items. Okay, I think I have the list here, just so you don't miss any of them. That's all the things <laughs> you have so far. Um, oh, thank and then you. the robe of scintillating colors. Okay, so that robe, um, you can wear it. Use an action to make a display shifting pattern, dazzling hues till the end of your next turn. During that time, it's bright to 30 feet out, dim to 30 feet past that. Creatures that see you that ha have disadvantage to attack you. Creatures in the bright light that can see you when you activate uh, are stunned, but it won't be you. It'll just be anyone but you within 30 feet of you when you activate it. Yeah, Very strong. Stun everything within 30 feet. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, everything. Yeah. Even your companions. Even your um, friends. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody already has the lantern of revealing going um, in case we run into an invisible, invisible. Yeah, that's good creature. For that. Yeah. I will take yeah. the uh, devotee's sensor, but okay. I will 
not wield it. I'll have my ampule. Okay. I already have three attuned items, I think. No, I only have two attuned items, but I don't want to switch out of either one. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll tune, I attune to the staff, so that's all my uh, attuned Wait, is ja- I don't remember. Is Javelin and Lightning attuned? Or no, it's just I don't think it is. Own thing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right, well, if we need to, if you guys want to pop anything before we go upstairs, I don't know what's upstairs, but um, uh, anyways, just be cautious and think about, you know. Yeah, if you want to drink a potion do. or use a spell, just type it in the chat. Tabru, you're going to take the uh, robe or should I? Um, you go ahead. All right. Cornelius will don the robe. Uh, Cornelius doesn't use, like, the one-handed weapons or shields, so... That's all for someone else if they want. He's 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 good with his great axe. I just took him. Okay, uh, I can give him back, but I just took both. That's fine. All good. Yeah, just I'm carrying it for you guys. That's how I see it. Okay. So the sentinel should give the bonus on initiative seconds. I guess I got switched. No, wait. I think only my armor is attuned, so I could attune to the sword of sharpness and the sentinel shield. Yeah. Did increase my armor class. Why not? Yep. yep. I'm happy to. Oh, who's got the potion of speed? That's really good. Whoever wants it. <laughs> I don't need it. My AC will be temporarily 19. Take it. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, so no one's drinking anything or casting anything before you walk up the stairs. Uh, how long want... do the potions last, I guess? I well, an hour, I think. Uh, potion of speed lasts for a minute. Um, potion of resist acid lasts for an hour. Potion of heroism lasts for uh, a minute. No, an hour. Okay, yeah, so I'll definitely drink the potion of heroism. Nice, type that in the chat. We get uh, basically like a bless with every attack and 10 temporary hit points. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Super nice. Right. I guess uh, Cornelius will take the drink the potion of resist acid after he, he's okay. already been rocked by the acid. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, who wants to scroll up or detect? I just don't know if there's going to be a dragon up there, but um, do you want me to do the control of casting on somebody? Scroll of protection from energy. That uh, lasts for an hour. Did that say three creatures? No, uh, third level. Concentration. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a concentration? It is. Does that mean I can't use another concentration? Correct. Oh, I don't want to do it then. Um, I'll wait up on that one until... Okay. I'm already resistant to fire. Right, so use... if, if there is a red dragon, that'll be helpful. <laughs> I want to do my scroll of armor of... Agathus. Okay, good right. deal. We're going to go up there and just mean nothing. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready? Five temporary hit points if you hit. Yeah, attack takes five gold. Yeah, nice. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. I'll be third in line behind the two. The stairs come up. I don't know who will be first, but put your first guy basically here at the top of the stairs. Second person. We're going to use the edge as each of the steps of the stairs. Okay. Like that, like I'm lining you up on the edge there. Roger. So, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's your order, but put yeah, you guys in the order you want. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. So you come up into a chamber. It's the whole floor, but unfortunately the map uh, doesn't show the whole floor because other stuff will happen. But there is an individual up here. So let me tell you what you see. At this height, not much of the tower remains. Resting on what's left of the third floor, um, Actually, above you, so you'll see that, uh, is a dragon egg surrounded by candles. So here is the dragon egg, 10 feet above where the stairs arrive. Um, oh, I love it's a Lego. <laughs> uh, resting on what's left of the third floor is a dragon egg surrounded by lit candles. A ladder climbing to the wall stops just short of the tower's peak. A little more than, oh, actually, first you see this. Okay, so on this floor. There is a red candle on a table. There is a cauldron past the table. There's assorted spell components and scrolls. There's a lip razor made from a humanoid skull. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And uh, Mary Rumwell greets your arrival with frustration. Not you again. Go bother someone else. Uh, With that, the form of the innkeeper melts away, replaced by that of a crimson-clad sorcerer um, who goes to attack. So roll initiative, everyone. Okay, so the 14 is better. <clears throat> I don't know how to adjust to the sudden... Uh... <laughs> uh, who rolled? Who's got the thing that got to roll twice? It's Hebrew does, yeah. I rolled a 14 Hebrew, and a 4, so I'll 14? keep the 14. Okay, I'll yeah. put the 14 on there for you. 14.1. Okay. 
I don't know how to deal with the sudden uh, advantage on initiative. Okay. Uh, Edebrew, you launch into action before anything. What do you want to do? Uh, well, as dumb as I am, I'm going to go there and smash. Okay. So 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Nice. So I'll uh, swing on him with my new sword. Okay. So it's not a magic weapon, so it's 1d20 plus 6. Okay. That's a 17. It's a hit. All right. Okay. So he'll take... Wow. Look at that. Ooh, bad rolls. Nine damage total. <laughs> Nine slashing. <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. So let's roll again. That's better. That's a hit. All right. And then the damage there is... And you know what? I will go ahead and add the fire giant strength to the strike to the second swing. Okay. So total damage is... 18. 18 more. Okay. His turn. He uh, tries to duck down behind the table so you guys all on the stairs can't see him. Idabru, you can see him. But then he like disappears after he does that. Idabru. Some sort of I bow hear, sort of. So hear spell casting? I so mean, you, I know what it sounds like. Yeah, you think he spell, did spell casting. Okay. Can I say that I think he's invisible? Uh, you don't no, have to okay. because quickly you hear him. Uh, from up above, you turn, you look, and you see a ladder. So there's that jagged ceiling ten feet over your head. Mm -hmm. uh, the dragon egg's up there with the candles lit all around it. Then there's a ladder that climbs from it ten more feet, so 50 feet overhead, or 20 feet overhead from this floor you're on. You see the sorcerer, his clothes flapping in the wind as he glares at you. Um, but that was his whole action that turn. So he's done. And then, huh. at the Linda, your turn. So he's visible again, I'm sorry? He's, he, he did mention door, is what he did. Oh, bastard. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, didn't go invisible. Just the dimension door up there. Can I see him from where I am on the That's stairs? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. Then let us... Um, Eldritch Blast, I guess, to start it off. Mm -hmm. One on the dice miss. That is a miss. That's a hit. 27 hit him. 12 force? Four, 12 force. Got it. And, and Stern... The... What else? No, I'm sorry, that was... That's all? Okay, Stern Belt, your turn. We'll run one, two, three. Oh, so the stairs are. Can I see them from where I'm at? Yeah, too? you can see them up there from where you're at. All right. I will cast with 120 foot range, 20 foot radius on that little cropping he's on. I will cast silence. Ooh, smart. And I will try to get away from all my companions just in case. Okay. So one, two. Th I think I can only make it this far. They only have 25 movement. And that's going to move Stern Belt, so you can add uh, oh, uh, inspiration for that. You get that with your movement. Cornelius, uh, look into how to climb up there, Cornelius. It's a 10-foot climb to get up to the ceiling. You don't, looking around, you don't see any way up there. Maybe mm -hmm. there was some some sort of ladder or something that went through the roof that used to exist, but that's nowhere to be seen. So you'd have to basically climb the wall or sco scooch that table over and leap up from the table to get up there. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking. If he's able to jump onto the table and off it up to here. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Does that take a dash, or is that he able to get... So you got see, one, we'll say two, three, four, hmm. five, six to get to there. Uh, okay. 30 feet of movement to get to there. So he has 25, so that, oh, that'll... So that would be dash. a dash, yeah. yeah All right, so now we're 10 feet below him with no way to get up there. Is that what you said? Uh, this, kind like, of. This so we, this you, guys, you guys are at 30 feet. Okay. This ledge is at 40 feet, okay. and this ledge is at 50 feet. And okay. you saw Cornelius run over to this table and jump yep. from the table to the ledge and pull himself up. And okay. you've used so far six squares of movement. you got four squares left, Cornelius. What do you want to do now? Climb, Climb up the ladder. The ladder. Uh, yeah, do you have, get do you have your hands free, or at least one hand free? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you go over there, it's one, and then you're basically like chest level to the ledge there, so you're looking right at him. Okay. Any more movement? Can he, can I get like right to here? That's it. Nope. Nope. No, nope. that's it. Yeah. Okay. After Cornelius. Right. Yep. Round that's is over. Then. You can see him yelling expletives, but you hear nothing now. Cornelius, everything's gone silent. Mm -hmm. Um, it brew your turn. Okay. Mm so I think this is, um, is this a possible angle for me to hit with the javelin and lightning or do I have? Yeah. To yeah. You back? could twirl that javelin at him. All right. I right, saw so I throw the javelin and lightning at him. It uh, probably misses. Ooh, yeah, that's a nine, which misses. Were you doing lightning or just throwing it regular? Uh, yeah, I was doing the lightning, but okay. the lightning doesn't uh, hit him. So there's a bolt of lightning between me and him. It would have scorched anything between me and him. Oh, it'll and hit it him, too. Death. It targets um, the target and creatures between you and the target. 
Um, the uh, only, okay. thi only thing hitting he does is does extra damage from the javelin and gives him no save. Yeah, so yeah so I'm 13, doing the lightning for sure. 13 deck save on the lightning. He made it with a 15. So okay. he takes half of uh, that is 8 points of lightning damage. Got it. Okay. Um, and I suppose I will follow suit. Uh, let's see. 5, 10, and then jump to here is 20. Yep. And you're big enough. You could um, like jump on the ledge and curl yourself up. He'll take okay. he'll take um, your movement next round to do that though. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, his turn. So he's got some magical powers that don't require sound. He's gonna do. This. He's gonna pour acid rain down upon the two fighters. So acid, Cornelius, your old friend, starts raining down on you. But I think one of you has acid resistance, right? Yeah, Cornelius drank it. Yes. It's forty-one acid damage to the two of you. Fourteen dex save or half. Holy shit. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, Itabru doesn't have to oh. use inspiration because you get advantage on your deck save. And that's a 15 for Itabru, so you make it. You take 20. Okay. Cornelius, right. you fail it. You take 20, but you take 41, but you're resistant, right, Cornelius? Right. Uh, so you take but, 20 but, as well. But, 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 Cornelius, you have. Who took heroism? I did. Oh, you did? Never mind. Okay. So both of you take 20, thanks to your various magics and powers. Uh, he's done. Ethel, Linda, your turn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> rinse and repeat, I guess. 23 for 8. 8, got it. 16, 16 for missed. 8. Okay. Uh, after after the Linda string belch. I will move. Now, now I'm under a ledge. Yeah, that puts you under a ledge, yeah. And and but am for, I for 40 For feet? fun, we'll put you right over here. You're at 30 feet, so this is 30 feet, everything on this floor. So the ledge most of them are feet. within... But both of them are within 30 feet of me. Generally, you have to have a line of effect, though, to them. Okay. To affect them with something you're going to do. So if I'm here, with, am I within 30 feet line of effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I will uh, I will have my amulet. I will squeeze it. And I will do reserve life. I don't know. Yeah. So 25, well, I will give... Unfortunately, that power only takes them up to the half their max, and they're both over half right now. Oh, see? Again, I should be paying attention to... How the heck do I get you guys healing? Um, all right, I'm going to move over here. It's, I think I can get to here with my movement. Okay. I'm going to Sacred Flame. I'm trying to get to the cauldron so I can climb up. I'm a okay, little... Sacred Flame, Irvin. Yeah. Back save or Irvin. You got a 19 uh, and dodge it. Cornelius, your turn. Okay, Cornelius is going to get right up in this guy's face. Is he, he able to get to, me to, to melee with him? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's going to use his uh, fighting spirit okay. and take uh, power attacks with a great axe at advantage. So the fighting spirit's a bonus action. It's 5 temp HP. Okay. Here are the attacks. First one is a 18. Hold up right there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All of a sudden, you feel a shadow fly over your head. Oh, shit. And in an, you look up, and you see the tail fly by of an enormous red-scaled reptile. Its wings unfurl with a span of about <laughs> 30 or 40 feet, and it circles around uh, and comes and lands on the edge of the tower over here. Unfortunately, you guys are in silence and can't hear what it's saying to you at all. But it looks <laughs> angered beyond belief. Um, those of you who are not in silence, uh, you hear it say, um, you adventurers have taken my egg and you will all die. And that's what it did. Cornelius, you saw that dragon fly overhead, now perch on the tower. It's going to come into the initiative next round. What do you want to do? Uh, geez. Uh, held kale swing again on this okay. sorcerer guy, I guess. He's okay. already... Taken down. This is advantage again. That's Ooh. a 16. Does that get there? That uh, does not. Oh, no. No, that does. That does. He has no cover from you. So 26 damage on that one. Got it. 26 damage. Um, but seeing seeing this dragon come, he's going to hold off on using his action surge, and he'll end his turn here. Okay. You see Irvin like fall to a knee, uh, badly, terribly wounded. You see him reaching out and pulling out a scroll. Um, neither one of you have any spellcasting ability. Uh, you don't think you can use a scroll um, in, silence. in silence in general. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you're, you're pretty sure you're safe from it, but he's looking at that dragon, his eyes wide, he's pulling out a scroll. Um, 
That was going to use this turn. That's into that round. And now the dragon goes. And the initiative with the initiative roll of nine. So he's going to be after Ethelinda in action order. Uh, Itabru, you're first. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my last rage. Okay. I was toying with the idea of grabbing this guy and jumping off. Uh-huh. And we just both <laughs> bounce on the floor. Like a nice. pile driver? Yeah. <laughs> From the top rope. All right, so I'll do that. I'll see if I can grab him and then pull him off. And, and just fall on off. On okay. Yeah. Uh, make a grapple attack. Um, he will use his dexterity to try and evade it. He got a 14 to evade your grapple. All right. And that is... So it'd be a strength check, basically, for you. Strength check. All right. And I think I get advantage when I'm raging, yeah? Uh, for strength checks, you do. Yep. All right. Oh, yeah. You grab him. Right. Good you thing just, you do. You just want to fall off all the way down to the ground? Yeah. You and him fall and tumble all the way to the ground, screaming and and crying out. He's holding on to his, clutching his scroll. Uh, you both take 2d6 damage from the fall. You both land prone. Uh, seven damage to both of you. All right. Since I'm raging, I'll take half of that. And he's prone and you're prone. All right. So I'll stand up because it didn't make any movement. Uh, and so then while he's prone, I'll swing on him with an advantage. So 20 plus six. And then second swing with advantage. No crit fishing. That's a hit. Right. So then I will go ahead and use my last fire giant damage. Maybe. I'm just typing here. All right. So he'll take that. Ooh, 10 How damage. How much? 10 total? Yep. 10 total? Okay. Oh, no. With rage, 12 total. 12 total? Okay. Got it. Um, And I, I don't know what the dragon was saying earlier, but I'll say now that I think this guy took your egg. We're just trying to kill him and get the egg back to you. We're okay. Done. Uh, the dragon doesn't seem to pay attention. It seems like you'd need to use an action to try and persuade the dragon. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm no good at that. I just thought <laughs> I'd call out and tell him what our intentions are. The dragon, uh, after your turn, Itabru is going to use a legendary action to uh, lash out with his tail from up above. It's got a 10-foot reach on the tail attack, or 15-foot reach on the tail attack. He's going to hit the closest one to him, Stern Belch. You're going to take a brunt of a tail attack from Dragon. Oh, but it's only a 16 to hit. Ah, that misses me with oh. my plus one shield. Nice. Otherwise, it would have it would have been 35. And... Okay, Ethelinda, what do you want to do? Oh, wait, did I skip Irvin? Irvin, Irvin stands Irvin. up, and Irvin unfurls that scroll and says, Fools, let me do this. And he's going to cast from the scroll. He's casting Hold Monster at 5th level at the Linda. If you wanted to counter it, you could, because you can see him. Uh, do you want to do any countering? Yes, I will counter. Okay, so you're countering at 3rd. So you're going to have to make a DC 15 Charisma check to counter his spell. Boom, you yeah. counter the Hold Monster Great. spell. Irvin is enraged. He's, he's like, turns at you. We're all going to die. How could you do that? Um, and he also has the Linda. Um, was it my turn now because that was uh, on his turn that right? was his turn and yeah he's done your okay. turn at the land then i will try to persuade the dragon okay hold up there before you do make sure you use everything at your advantage before you roll the dice um yep you'll have advantage already from you oh. guys's obvious mm-hmm. attacking erwin and stopping the whole monster spell um oh, wait i also have to do the dragon's other legendary he'll do a sweep his tail on his turn belch again um, tail on you, Stern Belch. Right. So that's a hit for 30 bludgeoning. That hit does hit. Okay. Now, Linda. So, I mean, it's going to take my action to do it. To persuade um, him. Okay. Yeah. You have so advantage because you're attacking Irvin, obviously. Uh, anything else you want to add to it? I don't know if I have anything. Kid class. It's an action to do uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't Dude, think this is mad. Never mind. Can I see? Could you hold the persuasion till somebody well, cast a spell? The dragon is bre- sucking in his air and going to be fire. There will be no one to do guidance on. <laughs> or do a guidance spell with <laughs> if that dragon was, goes again. I was going to. I mean, I was going to use my inspiration, but I already have advantage. Yeah, you already have advantage. advantage. Okay. All I can really Make do. a persuasion check. DC is 20. DC 20 on the persuasion oh, check. Oh, Come on. Lord. You can do it. I mean, why even roll advantage? Anything else I can add to it, but I don't think I can. Okay. Uh, here we go. Boom. Oh, yeah. you did it. See, that's why I told you. I, I had confidence <laughs> all along. All right. The dragon uh, swoops up to here, uh, grabbing the dragon egg with one of its claws and then like, clutching it to its chest. 
And then from there, breathing straight down onto Irvin. It's only going to hit Irvin because no one else is in the cone from the dragon toward Irvin. Um, and doing 90 points of fire damage to Irvin. Oh. Irvin's deck save to avoid, which he uh, fails, takes 98, and is a burning husk of a human corpse oh. on the ground there. Him and everything he was carrying. And the dragon then swoops away flying over your head, Ethelinda. And he says, I do not believe that you are here for good. We will face each other again one day. And flies, or she, and flies away toward her mountain, uh, mountain lair where the dragon the egg was taken. And that, unless you want to take any shots at the dragon, <laughs> is the <laughs> end. <laughs> Wait, who's wow. Attack of opportunity, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that's, that's, that's cool. What? Dragon Irvin off the top, Itaburo. Yeah, that was, that was fun. really good. All right, and at the Linda, good uh, persuasion check there at the end. Yeah, could have gone any different way but, without that persuasion check. Oh, Twenty. It was like hmm, that I dragon's that dragon. The way I beef him up is unbeatable for a fifth level party. There's no way you oh, guys would live. I was I was clinching him a little bit when I saw the beholder. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was too. I was like, you saw me standing yeah. out of the way. I was like, all right, okay. Uh, we'll cool. split up the treasure now. Um, we're going to split up the treasure in waves. So first, only you can only take items you can have, which is up to rare items, and only as many as you can only have, which is three for this level, and up to nine consumables. And then after that, we'll do another round of picking treasure where you can take anything you want, but you'd have to play this character if you're ever playing with me at a much higher level next time you played, if you took any of those other items. So um, his Scroll of Hold monster was used up and not, not successfully cast. Uh, anything else here? You used uh, you used the potion of heroism, right? Yeah, that was used up. You did not use the scroll of protection from energy. Uh, there's another scroll. Potion of speed did not get used. I don't think scroll of speed was dead. Did not sensor and shield. Potion of resistance acid did, and that is all. Okay. Oh wait. So back hold. So anyone who wants any of those items, rolled straight d20. <clears throat> well, the staff of frost is. Very rare, right? Very rare. So you can't take it in this first round. Okay. You can take it in a later Oops. round of picking. Yeah, anything that says V is very rare. Anything that says um, L is legendary, which is like the ring is legendary. And the orb of a dragon kind is an artifact, so you'd have to be 17 or higher for that, too. Wow. Um, yeah, okay. Got one more person to roll. Do your wow. rules um, differ at all from AL in this circumstance? Yeah, AL rules. Well, I don't know that this will be AL legal. But once Probably it, not with all this shit in it. Right. <laughs> once it does become AL legal, they'll put a list of what treasure you can actually keep in it. Oh. This um, is actually, I, I really enjoyed this. I actually had a good neat. time. Yeah. It it always you're first. Time. What do you want, Ida Brew? Um, from anything that's um, uncommon. So the first letter is a U or yeah. rare, the first letter is a R. And you currently have one, two, you have, currently have armor. three permanents. So yeah. if you take anything, you have to drop one of your permanents. Right. Well, if I play this character again, I can. I'm gonna just take note of stuff that I'm interested in, in case they make this AO legal. But right. I'll move things around if I play this character again with you. Yep. Is that fair? Or well, for splitting this up, what we'll do is you'll you have to drop one of the items so the other party can take it. AL is completely different. You can keep track of that on your own. All right. Well, why don't uh, since I play this character or plan to play it continued in AL, why don't I just forego? Well, no. Uh, if you no foregoing, play this character like you're a real character. Take the best items you can take, or I'll, or I'll pick for you. Um, yeah, try try to play it like it's this is your guy. These are real magic items. Take the best ones you can take. Uh, okay, there's really not much except I guess for the lantern of revealing. The other stuff just doesn't. Uh, I'm also a two handed. There's guy. plenty of potions with... too. There's potions of speed, potion of greater healing, potion mm -hmm. of healing. Uh, the potion of uh, potion of speed sounds good. All right, so potion of speed going to it. Uh, next is uh, Ethelinda. Um, oh man, uh, I think I'm missing. So where was the oh potion of speed? Uh, I don't know what's on my spell list. I don't know if um. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read all to see what's un or rare and very rare. Okay, so I can't take the scimitar. Uh, potion of clairvoyance. Ethelinda potions. Okay, and then Cornelius. 
Uh, Cornelius will take the plus one breastplate. Oops, <laughs> Yeah, to brew the potion speed is very rare. Sorry, but you oh, want to take right. Yedabru instead so, of that? Uh, greater I will healing? take the yeah greater, greater healing. healing. Okay, and then Cornelius, who took what? The plus one breastplate. Plus one breastplate, and then Stern Belch. Uh, I because uh, I will take the plus one. No, I'm going to take the Sentinel Shield. Sentinel Shield now. I don't know if I'm going to regret that. Sentinel Never had so many match jams to track at one day. <laughs> I know. Uh, very rare, legendary, very rare, very rare. I need to very tune rare, to it. Legendary. Oh, Sword of Sharpness, only very rare. I didn't know that. Okay, so what's left in the next round is th just those items. So those items you can pick with this character. And Stern Belt, should you have to drop anything to take that shield? Uh, No. Okay. All right. Only well, again, two. if you want any of those items. Aren't you only have Straight one? Straight D20. Who are we missing? Ethelinda, roll straight D20, please. All right. Uh, Stern Belch. You need to I'll get take the, the clerk only one. I'll take the flail. The flail? The devotee sensor? you have to drop something for that? No. That'll put me at three. I'll put you at three. Okay. Next is Ethelinda. The staff. Uh, that's not until... Um, oh, we're still... We get rid of all these regular ones. Oh, gee. Okay. I'm sorry. What... It's the list um, right above. Oh, the bag of holding. Bag of holding. You have to drop anything for that? I... Do so. That's, what do you drop in? Uh, I guess the dust of disappearance. All right, and dust of disappearance can be either a consumable or a permanent. You still want to drop it? Yeah, because or else I'd have to take. Oh no, you know what? I'll drop a uh, one of my potions of greater healing, and then sure. count it as a right. Yeah. Okay, so that's added to that list. So here's what's left on that list. Um, Cornelius. Uh, Cornelius will take the lantern. Lantern revealing. Does he have to drop anything? No, nah, he's got nothing. Okay. Then last is it a brew. I drank a potion of healing, so I'm going to replace it with a potion of healing. Potion of healing. All right. Then if only roll if you want any of these things that are left. That's what's oh, let me just do out of this. That's what's left for this next round. And how many th how many of these are we allowed to have? You can have three um, permanents and five consumables. And once once everyone's happy and taking everything they want, then I'll put all the rest up and you can take anything you want. Okay. But you'd have to hire, have a high level character to play again if you take anything else past that. Okay. Uh, Cornelius, which of those do you want? I'll take the potion of healing, the greater. Oh, oh damn you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two, though. Uh, no, one I already spoken for. Oh. Um, that was Cornelius Sternbelch. What do you want? Oh. I like a potion of greater healing? There's not one. Uh, but I will take the one of healing. It's great healing, then. Healing's already taken as well. Only the items you see right above is what's left. Oh. Oh. There's no potion healing there either. Scroll of enemy dead. Scroll of ice storm. Scroll of phantasmal forest. Scroll of speak with dead. Um, I think speak with. I think anime dead would be kind of against my. Speak so I'm gonna do oh, speak with dead good. then. Okay. All right. Does anyone want any of these remaining items? Roll a d20. Let me see. It gets me at two. No one rolls. Those. Then we'll do them all. Out. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. So okay. now everyone can roll, and you can take any item you want. You don't have to drop anything. You just have to play your character at a higher level next time we play, and that's everything that's left right there. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll go down the list, up the list, down the list, up the list. It's all work. Everyone's gone. I, uh, can I cast Ice Storm? I... Stern Belch? You cannot. Couldn't roll Stern Belch. Roll D20. Yeah, okay. Anything. First goes Cornelius. What do you want, Cornelius? Uh, scroll. Cornelius will take the robe of scintillating colors. Nice. Okay. After Cornelius comes at the Linda. That's Staff of Frost. Staff of Frost. After the Linda comes Stream Belch. Uh, I'll this for sure. I'll do the animated dead. Scroll of animated dead after Stream Belch comes Itabru. Uh, the Scimitar of Speed. Scimitar of Speed after Itabru. You get to go again, Itabru. Um, the Manual of Quickness of Action. And Stream Belch, your turn. Oh, I got what I want. You're all done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then above Stream Belch was at the Linda. Oh, well, dang. That ring of invisibility is still available. Uh huh. It is. Drop. Oh well, can I drop the? <laughs> You'd have to drop the holding I just picked up. You don't have to drop anything anymore. Oh, that's right, right. Yeah, because okay. you'd have to be higher level to play with this character. Level, yeah. And I'll take that ring of invisibility. Ring of invisibility. Yeah, you have to be seventeenth level. Um, after that, the Linda Cornelius. Uh, sword of sharpness. Sword of sharpness. Sword of sharpness. Okay. I'm sorry. You said what level? Seventeenth. To do a ring, ring of invisibility. Of yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's legendary. Okay, here is everything left. 
Um, the next one to pick is again Cornelius. Um. Oh, potion of speed, I guess. Potion of speed gone. <laughs> Everybody's dodging around the orb of dragon. <laughs> Ethelinda, your turn. <laughs> I'm. I'm good. I think I'm no good. more for Ethelinda. Then, uh, Itabru, you could go twice. I guess I'll take the plus one shield for when I switch to the scimitar. Okay. And then next item. Uh, the dagger of venom. Why not? Venom. Okay. And I think everyone has gone who wants to take anything. Is that right? Is anyone not taking any of these less? Oh, let me do this. Put a line to separate. This is what's left. Unspoken for. There's a totally clear thought, by the way. That's a pretty good item. Oh, the portion of speed is gone. Uh, da, da, da. But none of you are imaginators, so I can see why you don't care. Yeah, yeah. Clear, clear thought is int base, yeah. It is, yeah. And I like being stupid. Or... Okay, well, if you want any of those, speak up. But here is the list that you took. Uh, da, da. I mean, that is the final list with everyone's name by it in order. Perfect. There you go. Crazy uh, amounts of metrics. Share, could you share my token in um, Discord? Oh, uh, the distant images. images. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, so I'm going to add it to my D&D Beyond because I think I want to play this guy again. Okay. Okay, guys, thanks for playing. Yeah, that was Thank fun. You. That was, yeah, thanks that was... so much. All right, see y'all later. Short, but fun. All right. Bye. Take Thank care, you, guys. Tom.